Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about the early signs of celiac disease. Oftentimes, patients go from doctor to doctor trying to figure out why they have symptoms. With celiac disease, oftentimes, you are not diagnosed until much later on in the disease process. So, it's important to figure out early on could I possibly have a autoimmune condition called celiac disease? So let's take a look. If we look at the early signs and symptoms, right? Sudden change of bowel movements, diarrhea, constipation, etc., that persist. Another one is fatigue. And fatigue will typically happen because of either nutrient deficiencies or inflammation as a result of the autoimmune process. Weight loss. Even though you're eating, you're losing weight because of malabsorption. Bloating, right? You get distended when you eat gluten. The other components are neurologic. So you can develop things like brain fog, right? Ataxia or balance issues. Certain um, uh, people will develop issues with the cerebellum where gluten will mimic or look like cerebellar tissue and therefore that patient may develop ataxia or balance problems. The other is neuropathy. And neuropathy can occur with patients who have issues uh, with nerve endings, right? So you, the gluten protein will can create a autoimmune process within the nerves and create neuropathy. So oftentimes when patients come in and go, I have idiopathic neuropathy. I don't know what the causes are and my doctors don't know what the causes are. Sometimes it can be as a result of gluten exposure and neuropathy is pretty common, right? The number one cause for neuropathy in the United States is diabetes. However, with autoimmune conditions and what we call idiopathic neuropathy, I would go searching to see if you have gluten related issues. Now, the earliest signs that we pick up on routine blood work for people who may have celiac disease is a mild to moderate elevation of liver enzymes. So when we look at it, mild to moderate elevation of liver enzymes, AST and ALT, right? You can check this in your blood work and your routine chem skip screens, right? Now, 9% of people who have liver enzymes that are elevated will, when tested, will have celiac disease, right? So elevation of liver enzymes for people who actually don't drink, don't take any medications, is a sign there's a possibility that you may have autoimmune uh, disease called celiac. Now, when you have 15 to 55% of newly diagnosed celiac patients, right, when they check the liver enzymes of those patients, you're gonna see liver um, enzyme elevation, right? 15 to 55% of those celiac patients have elevated liver enzymes. That's a pretty high number, right? So the question is why? Why does it affect the liver, right? Why does gluten exposure, which affects the intestinal linings, affect the liver? So number one is nutrient deficiency. And nutrient deficiencies can occur because one, the gluten is creating uh, damage to the gut lining particularly the parietal cells of the stomach, right? Um, and then you create malabsorption, right? So if you, let's say, absorb uh, B12 incorrectly or you don't absorb enough B12 from your diet, what can happen is uh, choline could be low and you need choline to prevent things like fatty liver that affects the liver, right? So nutrient deficiency is one of those things. And then intestinal permeability. What that means is that the, the gluten protein has damaged the gut lining to the point where the intestinal lining has been damaged and it's more permeable to larger proteins. So things that should not get into the bloodstream will get into the bloodstream and create some inflammatory response, right? Damaging possibly the liver. Another one is inflammation. The inflammatory response can be broad and wide, right? And if it starts to uh, get into the bloodstream and into the liver, you're gonna have inflammation, right? And lastly, the most important thing is because 
celiac disease is an autoimmune condition, you have to start to suspect that you may have autoimmunity to your liver, right? There is an autoimmune hepatitis or autoimmune liver disease. So uh, gluten not only affects uh, the stomach, it can affect nerve tissue, the liver, gallbladder, right? Cerebellum, the brain. So it has many impacts. So it's very uh, important to understand some of the signs and symptoms. And then look at your blood work. I have elevated a AST, ALT, and why? I don't drink. I don't take a lot of medications. Why is my liver enzymes elevated? I would start to suspect celiac disease and you should go ahead and get tested, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.